a lot of that thing has been solved by ChatGPT. It will probably try to also hallucinate the link. So if you can't reach the link, then probably that information that the interface has provided, it's probably wrong. It gets even better and better answers actually when you do it as a conversation rather than a uh, simple Google search. Where do you see this going now? So ChatGPT is out. Uh, we know how large language models as a technology works. Here that this is not AGI. This is just a model that understands you. Why, that can why do you say that? Why do you say this is not AGI? It can literally do anything. You just, just the, even the thought process will evolve. So I think we are. That, that's that's we are talking Skynet here. Uh, no, so, that, that, that's I, my question. So what is the difference here? So I don't know how much of usefulness it would be at that point. years back, uh, there was this very big call out that engineers are just engineers because they're really good at Googling. Uh, we just meant that they knew the exact keywords to search for. So you're not like putting in your whole thing, uh, how do I write an essay on this particular topic? Just write essay topic name and you start getting stuff, right? Back and forth, back and forth. A lot of that thing has been solved by ChatGPT because that behavior of us questioning Google, Google was not really able to capture that. I mean, it does capture the keywords, uh, but ChatGPT is able to answer back in that conversation. Querying in natural language. Querying in natural language. It gives right? you a good seed as well. Like, let's say if you don't know anything about your topic, you just write it in, as Archie just mentioned, like if you query it in natural language, like Google, you would not get anything. But here you will get some seed, which you will, which will then lead you to the next step. So it basically gives you the good seed to like start exploring. And always like uh, this, uh, the results need to be like taken with a pinch of salt. But anyway, like that's the part of the process. I mean, you can always look that up. Once you have found the enough keywords, like you can just always refer it back to the actual website. Like, or maybe it's also a style of prompting where you can always question is like, you know, something like this, like, can you provide me a reference for this information that you have provided? So it will probably try to also hallucinate the link. So if you can't reach the link, then probably that information that the interface has provided it's probably wrong so uh, there are ways to also you know work around that but it not always works but you have to try that's the state right now but in maybe in like few months i would say like maybe we'll have something that fixes this problem as well and uh, the example that you mentioned right about uh, the engineers knowing exactly what to google mm -hmm. i think even in the chat gpt world that problem is there but in a transformed way and we have a whole new field called prompt engineering for this Mm -hmm. So, for example, I again, I'm a naive engineer. I tried uh, asking ChatGPT something, and Raghav comes in. He's a very experienced guy. He gets the answer much quicker than me because he knows exactly what to ask. So, the mm -hmm. same problem that we had on a traditional search is in some shape and form available here. And I think Raghav can speak more on that because he's playing yeah. with it more. So, prompting in this world is basically the same substring you used to use in Google. In here, like you're putting it as a question. It basically you need to format in such a way that it understands. You are not gonna be like putting keywords in ChatGPT, for example. You want to be actually ask question, asking question. Another thing is you don't stop there. You don't ask one question and stop. You should generally like go in even deeper. Like tell it okay after the answer what is right, what is wrong. It gets even better and better answers actually when you do it as a conversation rather than a uh, simple Google search. It's not a direct replacement of Google search. But but still, uh, so engineers still do have the edge, like you said, like so if you are able to do your prompt engineering, you are able to get more of ChatGPT. But uh, the, th the interesting thing for me is that it has opened up the playground much wider for like even common people to ask and get answers much faster in that natural language. Democratize right? the tech. It has democratized the tech. Right? Along that theme, uh, like uh, recently I was reading a post somewhere where, uh, you know, uh, it has enabled a lot of non-tech people into development cycle. So uh, I'll just give an example where uh, stable diffusion is like one other counterpart of uh, chat GPT. I mean, it can generate images based on the prompts. So what has recently happened is like there are plethora of models out there which is just uh, developed by non-technical people because all it needs is like a lot of fiddling around mm -hmm. and this whole uh, generative AI phase what has enabled is a lot of first of all a lot of attention into the field so there are tools which don't really require you to code it up so you can basically it's a gamified version of it so if you want to create a new model you can just merge the two models 
or maybe you can make you want to make some modification people are actually you know doing a lot of configuration reconfiguration and they are creating a new model out of it and many of these models they deserve to be a full blown paper in a research conference but they are not getting but they are not even like getting to the research conference because this is just ca coming out of garage so it's so magical that uh, you know a lot of uh, this research which wouldn't have come out otherwise is coming out just because it is available to the masses it is truly democratizing tech uh, as like tech which was always a you know a something which you know people just take it as a black box although it is still a black box to a majority of the folks but still that black box is now configurable so people can fiddle it around and make some uh, something out of it so yeah so that's another thing that has happened so going going back to the the other question that i was asking uh, where do you see this going so you mentioned that this is a generative ai phase that's i i completely agree with that wording right i i i see this as a phase but the, the question is so uh if you had asked me 3 years back 2 years back where computer science as a field was heading it is generally along the lines of whatever moore's law was we are getting more and more compute and smaller and smaller devices maybe some uh modifications and maybe some uh optimizations in the hardware sector software side i wouldn't have really expected so much because even there uh, i think around 2017 or 2019 the biggest thing in machine learning was uh image processing right and you had a lot of convolution neural networks and all coming up and then they kind of saturated after that point chat gpt just exploded this whole thing called as a transformer architecture that is like underlying piece of architecture for all of these generative ai models they exploded uh, so two part question right so where do you see this going now so chat gpt is out uh, we know how large language models as a technology works and we know all the applications so you have text you have images now we have audio visual uh, videos etc and applications will come up but what is the next step where do you see this going do you see this going to artificial general intelligence from what i see like it 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 might this whole thing is will be going more towards you know building models that are much more powerful and since it will be based on like the data which is present in the internet and with the current thing that is going on with open ai i see a lot of uh, models coming up in open source domain where you know these things will be openly available mm. and so where the complexity will lie is how can you use that model to build new products out of it so, which is already happening as well but uh, uh, you know one one thing which i think might happen is like you know personalized llms at some point mm. because uh, personalized llms as in some an llm personalized for me nishan so it basically may be tracking all of what i think i it believe it has all your information yes. to figure out okay yes although it will be computationally expensive but so was running a neural network similar to uh, the movie her if you saw that is yes. like the perfect dream uh, having a perfect assistant with you every time in your pocket yes so it it uh, so while agi is far away the uh, mind uh, here that this is not agi this is just a model that understands you but, that can why do you say that why do you say this is not agi because agi is much more bigger than that so what this model actually is what uh, chat gpt or llm for that matter in crux is just predicting what, like given the set of context what will be the next word so it's like saying if if i use a because word a lot so this model you know will put a lot of because because i've been using that word so it's like it just predicts what i am going to say so it it is not generating any new information agi is basically when it can also generate intelligence so right now what llms do is just use whatever the previous context that it was trained on whatever the training data was it just replicates that it does not create anything new whereas agi is much more bigger than that agi system can actually an actual agi system can you know also think along to build build a llm or llm like system on its own we, it won't need any human assistance so basically it can literally do anything you just just the, even the thought process will evolve so i think we are that's that's we are talking skynet here
Uh, no, so, that, that, that's I, my question. So what is the difference here? I so, actually think there is no difference. Like uh, starting with general intelligence, like basically chat GPT, I see it as a general intelligence. Like it's basically doing a uh, bunch of different things. Previously, like before chat GPT came around, you used to have like one model doing one thing. Now chat GPT can do bunch of different contexts. And we'll never have a case where we have some chat GPT kind of general intelligence and we'll have next day some amazing AGI level uh, general intelligence. It's just going to be a continuous graph slowly improving the systems, different kinds of systems which are, which are performing general tasks. Over time, you'll have some day it basically has improved a lot. You'll never have a clear difference that this was uh, not AGI yesterday, tomorrow it's an AGI it will just become normalized. Everywhere it's there, it's being used for everything. That's where I think it is just AGI. So I don't you're, you're seeing this as a stepping stone for... Yes, AGI. like I'm just seeing this is a continuous process. You'll never have a clarity on, okay, we have achieved AGI today. So, so to not... that point, uh, I agree with you about the continuous process, but I feel there is going to be a saturation or a plateau somewhere. Uh, to the same point that Nishan made, right? So again, it's going to be everywhere. People are going to be use it. But the question of how useful it is could pro possibly decrease. And the, the main reason I say this is, uh, he mentioned, it's, it's basically trained on a lot of data of, over the internet and people are using it for their use cases. Now people are using it and this whatever is coming out of GPT is going back into the internet. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing new that the models are going to be able to learn, maybe let's say five years into the future, because it's all regurgitated data going back. So, so I don't know how much of usefulness it would be at that point. Yeah, I agree. But so I'm not taking into account that look, this is a fixed architecture. Like there are improvements coming every day, right? Every day there is a new release of paper, new paper that basically adds a new thing to your transformer architecture. So like there are, as you say, what I see happening next five years is like adding, filling gaps. Like there are weaknesses and people are filling in gaps, like a reasoning models. There are a bunch of causal reasoning models that are coming around, which are using completely different type of AI, like symbolic AI, which is not how transformers work. Symbolic is like more about reasoning. Okay, if so, so when you say reasoning, it's like it's actually thinking about yes. because this happened. Yes, this will go to happen next. Cause and uh, effect on all those things. They are filling in gaps in transformer. They are not saying that this is the final architecture. The symbolic AI, like the reasoning model, will work always. They are combining it into one filling in the missing pieces. And I think as we do, we are gonna go into like uh, more general intelligence, improve this general intelligence as going forward. But but there is, there is a limit on how much nuts and bolts you can add to a black box when the data doesn't change, right? How, how do you handle for that? Like the, again, I mean, very exaggerated point of view, but garbage in, garbage out, no matter what your tool is. So, that was true, like uh, how many, how much garbage do you already see in the internet, right? So that has been true for ML from the beginning. We, we always say like no models work, garbage in, garbage out, like whenever you feed in garbage, it will always be garbage. But what we have seen recently is that the adding more data has been improving a lot. Adding new data and what we have seen is models are fairly capable to understand what's more important.